morning, or it might be afternoon where you live. I'm Chris Coates, and we're going to talk today about sprouting, uh, sprouting seeds. And uh, also, just as a little reminder, uh, Sholo Library has a sprouting jar kit, just like this one right here, that will be available for checkout. So if you're interested and you want to try it without buying your own uh, sprouting kit right away, go to the Sholo Library and uh, check this little kit out. It has the lid. It's a wire lid, some sprouting instructions, and a sheet of uh, instructions that I have put together that uh, we'll talk about as we go along today. What can you sprout? Oh, just about anything you would like. Uh, most people sprout alfalfa, mung bean seeds. Uh, you can buy all types of seed mixes. This is alfalfa seeds. Uh, you can also get a, a different mix like a zesty seed mix uh, that would have uh, fenogeek and radish and a little bit of the alfalfa. There's all types of things out there that you can buy uh, and use for sprouting. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the first thing we need to know about sprouting seeds, it's kind of like growing seeds in the ground. They like a particular temperature, 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit is where most seeds like to germinate or sprout at. So a kitchen is fine, uh, you know, a windowsill is fine. Uh, somewhere in the house for the winter usually does a very good job sprouting the seeds. I tend to keep my seeds just on the kitchen counter, uh, nothing fancy, just let them sprout, uh, and they do, they do just fine with that temperature. The first thing you need to do, decide what kind of seeds you want to sprout. We've talked about uh, all types of them, so uh, once we've decided what we would like to sprout, we soak them. Uh, you'll see on this first slide here that we have seeds. Uh, I have my zesty mix and I have some mung bean seeds. The mung beans are the big seeds. Now, uh, basically you put them in your sprouting jar, for instance, in this jar, uh, or I have a little sprouting kit here. And basically what I do with this is I sprout them Oops, a little water there. Well, I sprout them in uh, that bottom tray. You want enough water so that it covers the seeds you're sprouting by at least two or three times because these little guys are going to swell. They're going to imbibe that water just like the seed would do in the ground, except they're going to do it a lot faster. So. Once you get your little seeds in there and you uh, fill the jar with water, then you're going to put the lid on the jar. This lid uh, might be, uh, or this little lid, and you're going to put them aside. You can see in this slide here, uh, on day one, we have put them aside. They're soaking. Just use any old kind of a towel. This is just an old kitchen towel I use. I've even used paper towels. So you want to cover the seeds because they sprout in darkness. They don't sprout in light. So you just cover the seeds up, let them go there, uh, at least soak them overnight, 24 hours is okay, and come back the next day. On this uh, day two slide here, you can see that the seeds are substantially larger than when you put them in. You can see the mung bean seeds have really expanded. They've imbibed a lot of water. They're swollen and kind of fat, and so have the little seeds in the zesty seed mix. Now, once you see that, you take it over to your sink, rinse them very well, 
and pour the water uh, out of the sprouting containers, whether it's a jar or a little uh, set like this. Rinse them well, drain them. You don't want the seeds to sit in water anymore. You want them to be moist, but drain any excess water out of the sprouting jar. Now you simply cover them back up, put them back wherever you had them for the first uh, day, and let them sit again. Some people like to rinse the, the seeds two times, even three times a day, um, at least once a day, you're going to want to go ahead and rinse the seeds uh, and drain them and then put them back and recover them. Uh, again, the seeds like to sprout in the dark and they need that moisture from your rinsing in order to provide moisture for them to sprout. Okay. So once we have done that, uh, we're going to wait, depending on the seed, it might be four days, might be five days. And you can see from the slides how our seeds have progressed. Uh, you can see that they're beginning to put out little roots uh, and slowly growing bigger and bigger uh, over days uh, three and four. Now on the fifth day, you can see that these little guys are actually looking like little plants. Now, these little guys here, this is some of my zesty seed mix. You can see these are starting to turn green. When you first uncover your seeds on day five, you're going to basically see white seeds, and you can see that from my slides. But just after a few hours of sitting out on the kitchen sink, uncovered in the light, these guys have really greened up. You can eat them ungreened. A lot of people like them green. So if you just uh, want to go ahead and eat them right away, that's good. If you want to let them sit out for max, maybe another day, they will green up and look like little plants. Now even the mung beans, the mung beans don't get quite as green. They tend to stay a little more towards the white side. But nevertheless, uh, you can eat them either way, uh, green or uh, just kind of whitish. Now, once the on the fifth day, once you've got these guys uh, sprouted and you're ready to go, there's one other thing you need to do. Now, this little zesty sprout mix, look at the roots on that guy. Whoa, boy, those, those little guys have really put out some roots. Um, what you're going to do is just kind of pull them out, and you're going to put them in a, a colander with uh, a fairly fine mesh to it, and you're going to rinse them all off again. You'll see some of these little uh, hulls, some of the seed hulls um, are on here. Some of them will rinse off, some of them won't. It's not a big deal. Uh, they're fine to eat uh, on this little zesty sprout mix. But these guys are really very good. Mmm, tasty, wonderful in salads. Now the mung beans are a little different. You can see there are some green things in here, and these are actually the seed hulls. You can see these seed hulls. Some people will eat the seed hulls. When I do mung beans, I prefer to clean the seed hulls off and get rid of them. Uh, they're great for the compost pile, uh, if you have a compost pile. But these little guys are really um, pretty easy to clean. They take a little more time than the smaller seeds. There's lots of ways you'll find on the internet that people use to clean these uh, seed hulls off. What I do is I just get a, one of my big mixing bowls, I throw these guys in it, and fill the mixing bowl with water and stir. The seed hulls mostly float to the top, 
and the little sprouts sink to the bottom. So it's pretty easy to go in there and just scoop those seed hulls out uh, and toss them uh, either away or uh, put them aside for your um, compost pile. Now this, these are cleaned. I cleaned these a little bit earlier. Uh, so most, there's a couple of seed hulls in here and that's fine, but mostly they're nice and clean. So these are ready to uh, go out, go in a salad, soup. Uh, there's all kinds of dishes that you can use uh, that you can cook them in. Uh, and it's, it's just up to you how, to you how you like to use them. I love them in my winter sandwiches because they give me a nice crunch. And I miss that crunch from, uh, from all my summer salads. So these guys are very nice. I also like them in salads. And yes, you can just eat them plain because they're very good. They're crunchy, they're sweet, they're tasty. And like I say, all these guys have little different flavors. These are a little spicy, not real, but a little bit. The radish kind of gives them some spice. But these are, are more plain, but they're very, very good. Now, something you probably noticed is that we only used one teaspoonful of these small seeds and we used a quarter cup of these seeds. When you put, and you, you notice that on the slides, when you put that quarter cup in there, it doesn't look like very many seeds. But you can see these seeds have filled this jar. So don't put in too many seeds or, <laughs> or your, your sprouting will be, um, your seeds won't have room to sprout. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely pay attention to how much you put in. Generally a teaspoonful of small seeds, a quarter cup of uh, the really large seeds like the mung beans. Okay, I think that's about all that we need to talk about. Um, there are lots of different sprouting jars. This is a little kit. You can actually sprout two different um, types of seeds or have a series going of the same type of seed. Uh, and the old sprouting jar is the old standard. All work great. Uh, look around, uh, go to your local health or herb stores, see what they've got. Look online, uh, choose the seeds that you like and the seed sprouting uh, kits that you like and enjoy and have a very good time and a healthy time too. And thank you for turning in. And again, remember, Sholo Library has this little seed sprouting kit that uh, you can check out. And we want to thank Sh Sunshine Herbs here in Sholo for helping us with this class and providing us with uh, sprouting kits. So thank you very much for tuning in.